Ag Life, presented by ADM Lloyd Minster. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our agriculture show, Ag Life. I'm Gerard Lampau. And on the menu, financial incentives for beef producers as VBP Plus continues to pay dividends. And farm blues. We find out what's on producers' minds ahead of seeding season. And a major in equine science is just one of the new courses at Lakeland College. But first, the good news for Verified Beef Plus continues to roll in. Let's get the latest numbers as the beef sector is ramping up the sustainability effort. Well, VBP has been very busy. We've been getting lots of producers signed up and lots of producers uh, certified. Melissa Downing, who ranches near Provost, is the Alberta Provincial Coordinator with VBP+. Plus. She is leading the charge with the sustainability effort. In August, we were granted the um, as a certification body for the Canadian Roundtable for Sustainable Beef, and so now all of our VBP Plus producers are also certified sustainable. Downing says there's also been some traction with the Canadian Beef Sustainability Pilot Project. After the fourth quarter, we saw some continued good positive results and returns to producers were uh, very encouraging and we've been seeing increased volume every quarter. So there has been, has been a good uptake of that program and we're hoping to get more producers on board. Payment to producers for the last quarter of 2018 was $18.24 per head per producer. So if three producers owned that animal, each one of that, those three producers would receive that same amount. With corporate involvement from McDonald's, Cargill's, Cara Foods, Loblaws and Cactus Club, a producer with, say, 700 animals being tracked through the system from farm to feedlot is getting a hefty check in the mail. We've got... Uh, about half the feedlots, half the feedlot capacity in Alberta is now verified. So we're really getting some good, good uptake. And when we get some more cow calf producers on board, then they'll f help fill the system. Word is slowly getting out, but more effort is needed as the goal remains to get the entire industry certified as verified sustainable beef. This will go a long way to meeting the volume of market demand for sustainable product. Maybe it's a management change for them that they need to implement before they get certified. So there are different reasons why, why people might be just getting on board now or not on board yet, but, but there's a good reason to do it right now. The effort is also to certifiably demonstrate by third party that Canadian beef is the best in the world. Canada right now is Canada's the leader in, in sustainable beef production and we're the first ones to come with a certified sustainable label. So that's a, a huge thing in the world. And still to come, club root management. We get an update from the county of Vermilion River. Do stay with us. This segment of Ag Life is brought to you by Webb's Machinery. Webb's Machinery, your new Holland dealer in Vermilion, Vegreville, and Lamont. With the march of club route across the prairies, producers need to be on the alert. Let's find out what's happening in the county of Vermilion River. So in Alberta, club route is managed under the province's Agricultural Pests Act. The law requires landowners to control the named pests. Kathy Erickson Airchuck gets out often in the Vermilion area looking for weeds, pests, rats and club root. So the County of Vermilion River has the responsibility to, um, to check for these named pests like club root and to come up with a policy and make some decisions on how they'll manage it. The County of Vermilion River detected its first club root site in 2011, then in 2017, which had more moisture, five fields tested positive. 2018 was a lot drier. We found one additional positive field, and so we are, we are finding some club root in the county. It's definitely present, um, not at high levels, and not in huge, you know, crop killing infestations yet. There are management tools available that producers need to take advantage of, including club root resistant varieties. This is much better than dealing with a large infestation, which will drastically limit the growing of canola. There's not a lot of options left. You may have to just stop growing canola. So we're in, a, we're in a good place to be finding it right now. And I think that's why the Vermilion River is putting such a, a push on trying to keep the information out there and keep looking for it. 
During the summer, county inspectors will do random checks scouting for club root. Suspected plant samples are sent to the provincial lab for further testing and confirmation. Then the conversation begins with the landowners. We start talking about um, you know, a management plan and letting people know that there might be a problem and they can start planning for how they'll manage it. County of Vermilion River policy requires a crop rotation of a minimum two years out of canola, a minimum tillage rotation, and ensuring that soil from the field is not allowed to be blown or moved away. Another cover crop can be used that's not a brassica. Any other cereal or pulse crop um, that won't harbor the, the club root spores. Well, Lakeland College is creating new majors in the Animal Science Technology program. The four majors will allow students to specialize in a certain field, including a new equine science major. We're now currently going to offer an equine science option. The other change we made was instead of a specialization or their diploma just saying animal science technology, it will now say animal science technology with a major in their respective species choice. So the livestock science, beef science, dairy science or equine science program. Students' classes will depend on which major they select. Before they would come and select electives and they could make some options, uh, their species choice will determine which courses they're taking. So it makes it easier for us creating schedules and setting that program up for them to come in the fall. Um, the other offer option it gives is those equine students now get a two-year program. And those courses will begin in the fall and are two-year diploma programs. Well, the seed has already been bought and producers are actively waiting. Let's take the temperature ahead of this year's seeding season. This tractor's in for an oil cooler repair. It's uh, happened to mid-harvest mid last year, so it's time to get things fixed up and it'll be pulling the harrows this year. Producers are aiming for early to mid-May to get going on seeding season. For Devon Walker, the ground is still soft and muddy, but the eternal optimism of farmers allows for a get-or-done attitude. We're seeding faba beans and peas, and then uh, hard red wheat and CPS wheat and canola, uh, and then oats, and probably seed in that order. The troubles with China is just one of the issues as producers decide if they will grow less canola. Just to hedge my bets, I guess, uh, protect myself against the, against the worst case scenario. Um, our canola rotation is about one third of our acres are canola. So uh, just trying to be profitable if everything goes good, but try and protect against fallout if things go, stay worse. With pulses under tariffs from India, Durham stressed in Italy, and the Chinese canola crisis, there are dark clouds looming this season. Walker will cut back on his canola by 10%. The cold winter also held back on some projects in his shop. This winter, I didn't get nearly as much done in the shop as I hoped. A lot of the machines, uh, just because it's been so cold, uh, don't like to start them when it's that cold. A lot of them are hydraulically driven and things like that, so they're just best left till when it's warmer out. So here's another part of the food story. Every spring, producers get just a little antsy to get seed in the ground. The snow has just begun to melt off, but one part of the process is getting to find out exactly what the soil temperature is. Uh, well, it looks like the soil is still very cold, uh, 16 degrees Fahrenheit with my laser thermometer. Producers will seed at between 1 to 2 inches of soil depth, and for canola, they're looking for a soil temperature of about 6 degrees Celsius. Last year's poor harvest means that quality seed this year is scarce. Producers are watching their pennies. People are more inclined to fix machines right now rather than, say, buy a new piece of machinery. Uh, we're seeing everybody just kind of stick into a bit of a holding pattern. In the north part of the province, in Saskatchewan here, we've had wet years and we've had to spend a lot of money on grain drying and things like that. So, and in southern parts of the province, it's been dry. So we've seen a reduction in yields and so on. So auction sales have been fairly soft and prices have been a little soft the, this spring that I've noticed so far. For the non-farmer, staying optimistic and seeding crops anyway is a tough ask. Take the knowledge you have and make the best decision for that day and, and have some confidence in yourself that you did what was best as far as rotation planning, as far as equipment purchases, as far as input planning. 
And when we come back, we continue our visit with Devin Walker as he prepares for seeding season. We find out what else is on producers' minds. Do stay with us. Well, depending on the weather, producers are still aiming for early to maybe mid-May to get into the ground, but there are dark clouds hanging over the canola field. Let's continue our visit with Devin Walker, who is hedging his bets. And we're still combining, but the farm is getting snow. Unreal. Last year we had like very brutal harvest conditions. We had snow in the middle of harvest and, uh, and then a second snowfall a little later on. And most producers here were scrambling to get good quality crop off the field. Devin Walker says the seed growers did a good job at getting a quality crop in the bin for producers to put seed back on the land this year. But farmers are still having trouble sourcing good germinating seed. The trade battle with China has producers switching up. Walker is scaling back his canola by 10% and seeding oats. Quality barley, oats, peas and beans are becoming scarce as farmers switch up rotations, review their finances and wait for May. Spring breakup, mud season has been fun trying to get the last bit of grain out of the yard and get some fertilizer into the yard. Uh, the ground's very soft, uh, the sloughs are all full, and uh, the, the land is very wet still, and will probably be till the near end of April. Producers are actively waiting, but eyeing factors outside of the canola field. Now we have this carbon tax being imposed, and on a farm of my size, by 2022, that's gonna cost my family household an extra $12,000 a year in just energy, that's just diesel, and trucking, rail, electricity, natural gas, and grain drying. Not to mention any of the other escalation in prices due to um, off-farm inflation due to carbon tax. There is always uncertainty in farming, but government and trade issues are on producers' minds as they plan for seeding season. A glimmer of hope is a hint about lowering interest rates to spur some economic development. That's on farmers' minds all the time is interest rates are, they play a big role. Farmers have carry a decent amount of input debt and land mortgage debt and things like that that they have to service. And if interest rates were to go up, that would just add another black cloud to, you know, this kind of on the edge of what could be really poor times in the agriculture industry. Well, this next segment comes to us from the Alberta Cattle Feeders Association. Let's have a look at the use of solar panels on the farm. We decided to explore the solar panel path because um, some of my peers within the feedlot industry had put them up. I started getting curious and I sat down and talked to a couple of them and it's a new thing but um, they've had some pretty good success, no hiccups so far. So we investigated it further and then with the Alberta government giving quite a hefty subsidy for putting the panels in, we could see some return on investment. We we're calculating about a 10-year payback with the present energy prices so on our long-term thoughts are that energy electrical energy will eventually be going up gradually so maybe it'll be paid back even quicker the solar panels were constructed by western solar out of calgary and they've done some other projects around here and had some good feedback and they were really good to work with so they basically did everything for us for including the helping us apply for the funding and this project was funded a third by the Alberta government. I think without the funding right now I don't think it would wouldn't be feasible but with the funding that the go present government has available it does make it feasible to put them up. So far so good. I can't really tell because energy bills are sometimes delayed in getting out how much we're saving but I think within by the end of this year we should be able to see some significant savings on our power bills and maybe get a sense of where we're at. They have a little app where you can see how much power you how the power is working during the day and then as the sun goes down so you can track it monthly and obviously in cloudy days it doesn't work as well it's the panels are being pumped into a meter by our feed mill so 
whatever is not being used by the operation here is being put back into the grid. So that was important for us. Yeah, they seem to be working fine. And when we come back, the importance of seeding right the first time. Do stay with us. Ag Life, presented by ADM Lloyd Minster. Well, even with the canola crisis, farmers are eternal optimists and will be putting seed in the ground this spring. We get some important information on seeding right the first time. Stand establishes kind of everything from when growers are getting their canola seed all the way to, uh, up it, to, to its emergence. Ian Epp with the Canola Council of Canada graduated from the University of Saskatchewan in 2013. He farms with his family at Blaine Lake. Getting canola seed out of the ground requires some agronomic planning. All the decision making, all the factors that go into how much canola seed, how, when to plant, all the various factors in planting about how you're going to plant it, what speed, the spe all these other factors, and then getting it, a nice canola stand out of the ground. Factors like the weather are outside of growers' control when it comes to the speed at which plants stand out of the ground, but there are some key tips to bear in mind. Seeding depth, so how deep we're putting the canola seed, how fast we're seeding, are we putting fertilizer with the seed, some of these factors are really within the grower's control and make a big difference. All the conversations may happen over winter, but in a mere two to three weeks in spring, the seed is in the ground. So it's a busy time, conditions in the field can change a lot, and so sometimes we have to adjust our seeding practices to depending on how the conditions are changing. And canola seed is expensive, so we want to get this right, and we really only have one really good opportunity to go at it. So it makes it, it's a big challenge for growers. If you mess up, there's always some receding, but producers will try to avoid this. Canola seed is expensive, so it's hard, you don't want to put too much seed down. And you want to maximize your revenue. On the flip side, it's hard to compensate for not enough canola seeds. So canola plants can branch out, and they do some compensating, but at some point it's hard to fix not enough seed. Well, it's time now to roll our events calendar. This is the part of the show we want you to get involved in as well, apart from your story ideas. So if you want to be a part of this, you can email us. Yeah, glampow at stingray.com. Lots of events. Let's have a look.
So certainly with the weather warming up, lots of community events on the go to take us through the month of May, including the various relays for life, the one in Lloydminster on uh, May 31st there. In upcoming episodes of Ag Life, we'll continue our conversations that we've been having on soil health as well. We've got numerous stories that we've been doing on transition planning and doing it successfully. So we're going to roll out some of those for you in the next few weeks there and look out for that, of course, in our next episode of Ag Life. Well, that's a wrap on this edition. Of course, we enjoy your comments and story ideas. We'd certainly love to hear from you. You can email us. Our new email, of course, is tv-news at stingray.com. You can follow us on Facebook, Primetime Local News. Primetime Local News as well is on Twitter and PTLN News as well on Instagram. And of course, you can send us mail, Stingray Broadcasting here in Lloydminster, 5026 50th Street, Lloydminster, Alberta, the postal code T9V1P3. I'm Gerard Lampau, and we'll see you next time for All Things Ag. Take care.